Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and welcome to a special session of our ARC 32 uh, course. Uh, we are here today with two special guests from Halsim, Philippines. We have with us um, Ms. Stephanie Ann Fragoso, who is currently the sustainability manager of Halsim with more than 10 years of experience in cement manufacturing. And we also have here with us, uh, Mr. Uh, Erwin Mendoza, who is currently the head of innovation and technical sales of Halsim Philippines. He is also a chemical engineer with more than 22 years of experience in cement manufacturing. They are here with us today to talk about Halsim's sustainable products and building solutions. So before we begin and, I, and we give the floor to our distinguished um, guest speakers, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our ARC32 faculty. We have here Dr. Nicolo del Castillo and um, Professor uh, Richard Martin Renen. Uh, we also have one more faculty uh, who's not here, uh, Professor uh, Johannes Chua. And I'm uh, the last of the faculty, Professor Aaron Lekshanis. So uh, before we begin, let's give a virtual round of applause for our two uh, guest speakers. So you can use your, your emoticons. Thank you very much. And uh, let's begin with uh, Ma'am Stephanie's a uh, uh, topic which is wholesome sustainability strategy and initiatives. All right, so magandang hapon sa lahat and thank you for inviting us. No, We are very excited to share uh, kung ano yung mga ginagawa namin sa wholesome to push sustainable construction in the Philippines. So I'll be presenting a wholesome Philippines sustainability uh, strategy and initiatives. So wait a moment, I will share my screen. And later on, yun nga, si Sir Irwin will share our sustainable products and solutions. Okay. So, ayan. So, who we are? No? So, first introduction ng muna. So, Halsing Philippines is part of the Halsing Group. Uh, basically, we are the world's global leader in building solutions. We are building the way in sustainability with climate targets validated by science-based targets initiative. And we also have a net zero pledge for our climate actions. And we have the number one research and development organization in our uh, industry. So as Holcim Philippines, as a member of the Holcim Group, uh, we are committed to advancing progress for people and planet with our sustainable and innovative building solutions by making cities, cities greener, uh, empowering society, and improving living standards for all with our affordable and sustainable housing solutions or, and or building solutions. So in terms of our capacity, we have 10 million metric tons of cement capacity in the Philippines. And we also have a giant mix business and an aggregate uh, business in the Philippines. So our facilities are located uh, strategically nationwide. So basically, we have uh, four cement integrated plants located in Norzagaray, Bulacan, uh, in Davao City, in Baknotan, La Union, and in uh, Misamis or Lugait, uh, Misamis Oriental, and our head office is located in Taguig. And we also have one cement grinding plant, one paper bag plant, and dry mix plant in Paranaque, and some of our terminals. So we have a wide range of sustainable and innovative building solutions. So later on, Erwin will discuss uh, more about this. And these are the uh, number of iconic and uh, essential stru structures that we have already built. So we have uh, windmills in Ilocos, uh, Davao City Airport. We also contributed in the rehabilitation of Marawi, San Roque Dam in Pangasinan, Esitex, and uh, Tagum City flyover in Davao. So our core so sustainability and innovation are at the core of our strategy in building progress for the country. So these are the four pillars that guides our 
that guide our business action. So supporting circular economy uh, by building more with less materials, <laughs> pushing digitalization to have more uh, efficient plant operations by producing cement and uh, concrete, uh, thriving with people by helping communities and helping build affordable and sustainable housing for Filipinos and becoming a uh, net zero. So first I'll tackle why, uh, why do we need to become net zero? No? So the contribution of the construction industry in, the, in climate change, so basically uh, according to a study, no, uh, if the cement industry was a country, it would, be, it, would, it would be the third largest CO2 emitter in the world, only after China and US. So this is very significant. Now, in the building and construction sector, produces 38% of energy-related emissions globally. So out of this 38%, 28% comes from the operation of the building, and 11% 11, 11 comes from the construction process or uh, the embodied carbon of the building materials that uh, we use for buildings. So Ngayon, ano ba ang main uh, component of one of the major building materials that we use are concrete, right? So concrete is uh, made up of cement and other materials. And actually, yung CO2 from concrete is coming from cement. And in the production of cement, the bulk of the CO2 comes from the clinker production. Kasi cement is composed of limestone. And in the calcination of limestone, kapag niluluto natin yung limestone, uh, so we have C CAO plus CO2 na iniinit sa atmosphere and we need energy as well in our operations to produce cement and mostly we use uh, fossil fuel or coal. But uh, now we are using alternative fuel. Later on, I will discuss on that regarding our geocycle operations. And so to produce low carbon cement, we need to decrease the clinker content of the cement that we produce. No. So so these are the, ito yung lang, sorry, the categories of our CO2 emission. We have scope 1, scope 2, and scope 3. And we are focusing on uh, direct emission namin, or the scope 1. So we have what we call our Holcim's net zero journey. So we have our climate targets validated by science-based targets initiative in 2030 and 2050. And our target by 2030 uh, is to reach uh, 475. Uh, kilogram CO2 per ton of cementitious product that we produce. So how do we achieve this? So these are the initiatives that we are focusing on. So reducing the clinker factor of uh, the cement that we produce and using alternative fuels, shifting to renewable energy. So actually, uh, we are, so Holcim Philippines, we are the first cement uh, company to have a solar power plant that will be up and running by 2024. So this is equivalent to 15% of our total um, energy requirement, electricity requirement. And of course, push, pushing green products. Uh, Plants of Tomorrow, this is our digital uh, initiatives to have more, uh, more efficient plant operations, supporting circular economy using more recycled content in the building uh, products and solutions that we produce. Uh, we also have carbon capture. It's not yet here in the Philippines, but we have pilot projects in other countries and uh, adapting new technologies and of course being the first mover in focusing on green procurement and supply chain. So just to share, last year we have launched our first uh, cement with 30% less carbon footprint than ordinary Portland cement because out of all the types of cement, the OPC yung pinakamataas na CO2 emission. No? So this will be validated by an EPD and it bears an eco-label eco mark or global identifier for low carbon products. And in our support to circular economy, we have what we call our geocycle business, where we use residual waste to, um, for alternative raw material and fuel for cement kiln co-processing. Okay, so co-processing, it's a globally recognized technology. And if you see here in the waste hierarchy, no, um, so yung mga kinuko process namin in our kilns are basically non-recyclable. And also instead of using other uh, raw materials for cement, we have alternative raw materials that we can use or add in the clinker as well to support 
uh, circular economy. So our customers in GeoCycle are, industri are industries, agricultural sector, and LGU. So kinokolek namin yung mga municipal solid waste nila. Uh, and we can co-process it in our kilns. Okay, and of course, the focus of GeoCycle is a zero waste future. And just to share then one of our initiatives currently is we have what we call our Circular Explorer, where we have a solar-powered catamaran na uh, dadalhin sa Manila Bay to collect plastic waste. And there's also a science lab uh, dun mismo sa catamaran. We partnered with UPMSI uh, for this project uh, to collect plastic waste for over three years uh, in Manila Bay. So, again, so ito yung aming uh, digital uh, initiatives also to be more, uh, for our plants to be more efficient and also thriving with people, no, yung so, uh, our social initiatives then to help build sustainable and affordable housing in the Philippines. So, I think that's it for my presentation and I'll pass on to Irwin to discuss yung specifics or details of our sustain, sustainable products and uh, solutions. Thanks, Steph. I'll just share my presentation now. Yeah, so good, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, Thank you for inviting us and for giving us this opportunity to share some uh, information about the cement solutions and other building material solutions for, for sustainability. No? Uh, when we launched Lido in 2019, we we're already discussing about the impact of cement production to carbon dioxide emission. No? Uh, that was me presenting our US product then, Hosim Solido uh, in 2019. And in September, 2020, parang na reaffirm yung approach namin doon because na launch yung net zero climate pledge naman ng Hosim Global as what uh, Steph mentioned kanina and makita natin dito kasama sa mga uh, roadmap would be the launch of green products okay so alam naman natin to medyo lahat well informed na in terms of uh, relationship ng carbon dioxide at ng global warming, uh, climate change, no? and uh, kung ano sinasabi ng IPCC to mitigate all those. Otherwise, may experience latin lahat ng tong uh, tinatawag na nga na code red for humanity ng UN. No? And not only globally, but also uh, not only in the other countries, but also in the Philippines. So gusto ko lang maintindihan ng lahat so that paano nga ba nag emit ng carbon dioxide paano natin to minimitigate. I, I know na na-touch siya ng konti ni Steph kanina, but para lang maintindihan natin no? kasi pag nagpunta na tayo sa merkado and you buy your uh, products, your cement products for your projects later on or your designs later on, uh, baka lalabas na parang pare-pareho lang sila. No? But then, important rin na malaman natin uh, paano yung contribution natin sa carbon dioxide. So in order to produce cement, kailangan natin mag-produce ng material na tinatawag nating clinker. Uh, dito kasi yung clinker na to, dito nang gagaling yung properties ng cement, which is compressive strength, yung setting time niya, heat of hydration, etc. No? So, kailangan natin gumawa ng clinker. And to manufacture clinker, sabi nga ni Steph kanina, kailangan natin ng raw material na limestone at kailangan natin initin yung limestone na yun. And in the process of heating up that limestone, nabibreak down siya into two products, which is lime na kailangan natin sa clinker. And carbon dioxide, yung gas na CO2, which goes to the atmosphere. Aside from that, to produce the temperature nung, nung kailangan natin pag-cook, no? pagluto ng limestone, kailangan natin ng coal uh, to burn coal that again produces another carbon dioxide. So ito yung dalawang uh, paraan kung paano nakakakontribute sa carbon dioxide emission yung cement manufacturing. So basically... Uh, hindi naman tayo pwedeng tumigil in terms of our development or progress kasi kailangan din natin gumawa pa ng mga construction na uh, activities because there's still a lot of buildings na kailangan ng mundo with a growing population, urbanization, all those things. And sabi nga, the world still needs to build uh, one New York City size no, every month for the next 40 years. So ganun kadami yung demand ng building in the next 40 years ng mga construction. So we really need to manage how we use and how we produce cement kung ganito yung uh, magiging pangangailangan natin in the future because we know that one ton of clinker approximately nagpo-produce ng about 800 kilograms of carbon dioxide. 
So basically, to make green cement, the basic approach is you re reduce the amount of clinker that you use per bag no? or per ton of your, of your cement. So lower the amount of clinker used in making cement and replace them with, with something else. Okay, but also, for sure, you have to consider standards, customer needs, at saka yung cost and manufacturing capability ng mga planta. So how do we implement the plan? First, of course, we look at the cement standards. Saan ba tayo ina-allow to reduce uh, carbon dioxide, uh, to reduce clinker, and therefore reduce carbon dioxide? And we deep dive into the needs of the customers para ma-meet pa rin natin yung mga yun. Now, this is going to be a very busy slide, but then, ang sinasabi lang nito, uh, Portland Cement, yung sinasabi ni Steph kanina, OPC, ito yung may pinakamataas na clinker content. Therefore, pinakamataas na carbon dioxide emission per bag no? or per ton. Whereas yung mga blended cement types or yung uh, masonry cement types because they are blended, uh, binawasan yung clinker nila. Kung makikita nyo dito, could be around 70% reduction or 15% reduction, 40%. Ito yung may mga opportunities for carbon dioxide reduction and for more sustainable or green cement products. No? But hindi lang yung replacement just for filling purposes para lang mawala yung clinker mo. They serve a purpose, yung mga materials na ginagamit natin to replace clinker. right? So when they react with water, yung clinker natin, it produces two products. Uh, yung isa nagbibigay ng strength, which is yung kailangan natin. At isang byproduct is something na hindi naman rin kailangan. Wala naman siyang masyadong purpose. But because of the blend material that we use, no, yung pina-replace natin sa clinker, it reacts with this uh, byproduct and then it adds more strength to your cement or your concrete uh, eventually. Kaya lang, mas mabagal yung reaction. Uh, but kaya sinasabi yung mga blended cements, mas mataas yung strength nila over long period of time kumpara sa Portland cement because of this additional reaction. And because of this additional reaction, mas less permeable, so hindi siya madaling pasukin ng mga chemicals, uh, kaya resistant siya sa chemical attack. At dahil binawasan mo yung clinker, doon ang gagaling kasi yung heat of hydration, no? sa itong component ng clinker na to binawasan mo. So nababawas na yung init na, na iniimit ng semento kapag it comes in contact with water. Nakakatulong yun sa mas mapatibay yung structure. Ito yung mga pwedeng pampalit sa clinker, uh, fly ash mga natural pozolan, slag, limestone, and you take note na yung fly ash at yung slag, they are byproducts also of other industries. So it, in a way, we are recycling or upcycling these types of materials. Kaya mas malaki yung tulong niya in terms of circular economy, circularity. No? So typical comparison, uh, 40 kilogram bag ng OPC or type 1 cement, that's about 92% clinker. But kapag ginawa mo na siyang blended cement, you reduce it to about 50%. Uh, kasama na yung masonry cement doon, which is, which is the lowest uh, clinker factor. No? So ganun kalaki yung magiging impact niya sa carbon dioxide. So customers needs, may, may produkto ka na, nakagawa ka na ng blended cement, but you have to make sure na angkop siya sa pangangailangan ng mga customers because we know that iba't iba din yung mga pangailangan based on application, may general construction, May mga infra projects na kailangan ng durability, mga low heat na mga applications, masonry applications na hindi naman kailangan ng strength, compressive strength, but more on bonding and adhesion para mas madikit at much smoother na finish. At syempre yung precast applications na kailangan naman ng higher early strength. So kailangan pag-aralan siya para mas segmentize natin at kung saan natin i-offer yung mga products na magawa natin based on our carbon dioxide reduction. So with Holcim, we have this blended cement na we target to offer to the customers para at the same time, mabawasan din yung CO2 uh, emission natin. Ano? So for Holcim Excel, for example, ito yung pinakamatanda sa lahat ng blended cement, 20 years na siya in the market. And it reduces around 22% of carbon dioxide, always comparing to OPC or Portland cement, yung type 1, no? And we also have Holcim Solido, which is ideal for uh, road construction. Uh, DPWH only allows type 1 and 1 blended cement, which is type 1P, for road construction and other government projects. So okay, Holcim Solido ang uh, pinoposition namin to replace OPC. And it can reduce around 15% of carbon dioxide versus OPC. Isa sa latest product namin is ang Holcim Aqua X. This is a blended cement, parang kagaya din siya ng Excel, uh, general use construction, but 
it has an added, added feature of water repellency. So, nire-repel niyo yung tubig. So, kapag nag-harden na yung konkreto or yung mortar, it protects your uh, structure from water ingress no? and seepage. So, it's about 22% carbon dioxide versus OPC. So, these are the three products. At yung mga champion talaga in terms of uh, carbon dioxide reduction is itong dalawa, yung Wallright Prime, at yung Holcim Ecoplanet, and this is already mentioned by Steph kanina. But yung Wallright Prime, at least 30% reduction in carbon dioxide. This is a masonry cement na mas ideal siya for plastering, halub, uh, halub black laying, and filling because of his uh, superior adhesion and smoother finish. You know? And Holcim Ecoplanet, uh, this is a global brand. So if you go to other countries in Europe na may Holcim doon, uh, it's likely that you will see this type of design sa mga bags nila and even the brand, no? Holcim Ecoplanet. It's a blend of Portland cement with mineral additives and it is assured to maintain the 30%, at least 30% lower carbon dioxide uh, versus OPC. So kaya yung dalawa na to na product, they, they have the eco-label mark indicating that they are low carbon products. Okay? So so the status of low carbon blended cements in Holcim Global, they are widely used even in infrastructures or big projects because uh, they are acknowledged for their uh, as a durable cement no, in making more durable concrete, less permeable, lower heat, and better resistance to chemical attacks. So mga tunnels, uh, bridges, ports, uh, railways, the last ginagamit on is blended cement. Now. These next products or solutions that I'm going to present are global solutions. Uh, wala pa sila dito sa Pilipinas, but we are thinking of the possibility of bringing them here no? para ma-experience din naman natin. Of course, kinili ko lang yung sa vertical construction or sa building construction, which is much, much more uh, applicable sa, sa atin. No? So, ang una, kung meron tayong ecoplanet, which is the green cement, meron din counterpart yun na green concrete, which is the ecopack. No, ecopack is concrete, meaning may cemento na siya, may aggregates na siya, may tubig na siya, no? uh, ready mix, buhos mo na lang. But uh, ang, ang kaibahan dito, why it's green is because it uses a low carbon cement. So ang ecoplanet pwedeng gamitin dito or blended cements. And it uses uh, recycled construction or demolition materials. No? So recycled aggregates, pwede siyang gamitin. So it's also 30% lower in carbon dioxide compared to the typical um, concrete na ginamita ng type 1 cement. Okay, so, but it can go as high as 100%, which is the Ecopack Zero. Uh, this is now a combination of uh, use of recycled materials, low carbon cement, plus compensation uh, of uh, carbon no, uh, dioxide. Okay, so other solutions aside from concrete is, aside from green concrete is also the hydromedia. This is a permeable concrete. This is actually not just a solution, a product, but a water management system solution. So ito yung nakikita natin na konkreto na tumatagos ng yung tubig, inabsorb niyo yung tubig. No? So it's a water management to avoid, a water management solution to avoid flooding with high permeability and no water surface collection. Uh, yung drainage rate niya is 500 to 600 liters per minute per square meter at a rainfall about 50 millimeter per hour on the average. No? So ganun kabilis nang i-absorb or i-patagosin yung tubig. It's safe, non-slippery, aesthetics. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-design na slope siya para sloping siya para magdahil yung tubig uh, papunta dun sa drainage. Uh, sustainable, it's 100% recyclable. It reduces heat island effect, lalo na kapag ginawang ganitong parang parks, no? na ginamit siya sa mga parks, and low maintenance, and it, it is ideal for streets, parkings, parks, uh, walkways, uh, athletic terrains, and roofs, and even sa mga bike lanes, for example. No? Maganda siyang gamitin. And... This is, an, this is an example of Ecopack and Hydromedia in actual application. This is the Living Tomorrow Innovation Campus in Brussels in Belgium, which, re, which reduced, which the construction from the embodied carbon is 
reduced to only uh, consumes only around 70 percent uh, reduction in carbon dioxide because of the combination use of eco pack uh, the green concrete and hydromedia so you can see all the plants um, in the, the integrated in the design because of the use of hydromedia we also have the aerium uh, a different kind of insulation which allows you to build at the same time while you insulate the the structure so parang foam foam misya na concrete no or mortar na nagbibigay ng insulation so sinasabi dun sa india sa experience nila is na re reduce na yung temperature sa room or sa bahay ng 5 degrees celsius so it's a big ano uh, tulong na yun para mabawasan din yung gamit natin sa kuryente sa aircon for example for for cooling the house it is fully recyclable and with low carbon dioxide footprint compared to insulation materials and it uses mineral 100% mineral formula uh, para sa highest possible fire protection rating sa EU na standard so ang application niya is parang ni spray lang siya or or parang hose no parang parang foam siya na lumalabas sa hose uh, in this particular application ginagamit siyang sa Europe kasi to sa Belgium to uh, parang sa ilalim siya ng screed sa flooring no to insulate the flooring so sa ibabaw niyan yun yung screed sa ilalim niyan ito yung aerium solution we also ang wholesale nag-acquire din ng ibang business like the roofing uh, company Firestone no and they have this roofing solution ultraply TPO thermoplastic membrane marami, marami siya actually products ang Firestone and this is just one of those it's a highly waterproof and puncture proof and durable material and in combination with the hydromedia they were able to build this uh, roof uh, sa H type na roof no, sa Tamasat University in Bangkok Thailand uh, which is inspired by rice terraces in North Thailand, Northern Thailand so may mga parang hagdan hagdang palayan diyan na makikita and even uh, plants and grass lawns no parang para kang nasa park but actually this is on top of a building roof siya ng isang building and that's made possible because of a uh, combination of these solutions hydromedia and and uh, firestone roofing solution so it reduces the heat island uh, heat island effect of this building and the city na rin. so Again, these these solutions they are they are still with global. They are not yet here. Even myself, I'm not an expert with this with these solutions. Uh, but when we are ready to adapt this here, then we can have technology transfer, and that's the time na siguro medyo maalam na tayo how these solutions are being implemented and that uh, very specs of these uh, solutions or products. Now we also have a project like Houses of Tomorrow. Uh, kung may plants of tomorrow na sinabi si Steph kanina, we also have projects of houses of tomorrow. This basically just showcases, alam natin na yung pabahay, lalo na yung mga affordable housing projects all over the world is really in demand at kailangan maghabol ng backlogs yung iba. And we want to integrate the wholesome solutions, sustainable solutions into the houses of tomorrow na project. So just I'll just show some examples from all uh, other countries na nag-participate dito sa wholesome project na to. Like for example, sa India, they have this gratitude house in Pondicherry, India. And it uses the products uh, like Ecopac, Concrete, uh, Sorakash, Soraksha, Mortar and Plaster, Fly Ash Bricks and Recycled Steel combination para ma-achieve ng building na to ang 40% carbon dioxide reduction. Basically palang ini-imagine natin, this is what the houses of tomorrow would, would look like. No? We really have to be very sustainable and explore all options to make it green. At sa Kenya naman, like, ito common naman to large windows to allow maximum light and fresh air. But ang mga cement na ginagamit, makikita natin mga blended cement to, mga posolanic cement, which is also another type of blended cement. Uh, recycled aggregates, yung mga section of the roof underlay, ginamita nila ng mga recycled milk boxes, mga coil, no? to replace traditional iron sheets as form of uh, protection. So it was able to reduce uh, carbon dioxide by around 20% as, as part of the embodied carbon footprint of this building. In France, a very simple house, also using Ecopac concrete, uh, two types, no? and aerium blocks uh, for insulation. 
and low CO2 screen no, na gagamitin din. So around 50% CO2 reduction for this type of building. In Mexico, this is also a socialized housing project using water repellent and low CO2 cement. So parang yun yung aqua X kanina ng Colsey Philippines din. And using steel bars, which is replaced by recycled steel and the use of eco bricks probably hindi ako masyadong kabisado baka plastic recycled to with cement um hardener or band uh, that will serve as uh, bricks for for the whole house and of course sa Philippines meron tayong entry but nasa wave 2 tayo so it will be presented this year pa and still for completion uh, we are tapping the Rojas Foundation Weaving Center and we are partnering with the uh, Base Bahay of Healthy Foundation uh, the groundbreaking hopefully will happen on June 8, 2022. And the highlights of this uh, design of this house is that uh, it will use the, our, our Holcim Ecoplanet, uh, one of the champions of uh, sustainable green cement of Holcim Philippines. And it will be used in the foundation of the, of the structure. At the same time, the cement bamboo frame technology of, of the base Bahai, uh, base Bahai Foundation. The cement bamboo frame is parang combination siya ng um, bamboo material with cement plaster na naka-integrate na for, for the walls uh, of, of, of the structure. So we hope we are targeting that the carbon dioxide reduction of this particular building as compared to traditional, traditional built uh, buildings of this size would be around 60% uh, carbon dioxide reduction. So basically, that's that's all I I can I can share, and I hope uh, it's something from from the presentation. Thank thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon. Yes, um, thank you so much from both um, Ma'am Stephanie and Sir Irwin. That that was amazing. I, I learned so much from that. Before uh, we move on, uh, I guess uh, I will just recap what, what probably some of our learnings, and then we can open the floor for any of uh, questions that the students might have. So uh, we began with the introduction of the Halsim Sustainability Goals. And I think that this is something important for us to consider how we can mirror that approach for sustainability in our own designs that we are considering in ARC 32. So they mentioned climate and energy, and we are actually using uh, World Bank's Edge uh, software to look into the energy part. And then Ms. Stephanie also mentioned circular economy. And uh, I really like the statement about producing more with less. And I guess as architects for, for the, right now we're doing a middle-class residential project, uh, we'd like to provide more value to the client with less resources. And then second, a third is the environment. And for, for, for here, I think, I think we share the same with Halsim where we want to make space for the natural environment. Um, Halsim is, the industry of concrete is an extractive industry, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that they do not have that space for the natural environment. And in our own designs, especially for R32 and the space that we were given, uh, there's lots of ways to make that space for the natural environment. Fourth was people and communities. So here, it's very clear how Halsim is integrating itself into the larger community of sustainability in the country. Um, but for us, we can learn from that in ARC32 about being part of not only the urban fabric and be compatible with that, but with the community and neighborhood. And you know, our site is in Maginhawa. Uh, there was also residual waste for kiln co-processing. Co um, and uh, here we can kind of connect it with our own discussions on waste uh, management that we looked into when we we're doing our designs. How does that translate into an architectural space in our, our lots? Um, and is this something we can design and build into our homes? And uh, with uh, Sir uh, Irwin's presentation, we had a lot actually, uh, ECOPAC, so the low carbon concrete. Um, I think this targets, many of you have sustainability manifestos which try to look into exactly that, the carbon 
footprint. So this targets the embodied energy, uh, how to manage that by already using uh, low carbon products. Hydro media, media was very interesting. And I think we've seen this on some uh, TikToks or <laughs> Instagrams uh, and YouTube. Uh, permeable solution. Water management is that what the slide talk, uh, what Sir Irwin discussed with us. And I think all of us already in our site analysis looked into flooding and other problems with water that we can now, uh, at least the purpose of this is you can now directly connect it with the product. And as architects, that's the most important thing to know that it exists out there. Uh, Arium was, for me, was so interesting because I it's true. Um, the thermal comfort—it's just—it's a—it's a means for thermal comfort control, in the sense that it's already you can build an insulate. I like that term. Usually, we separate these materials, or they come in composite materials, which are still separate. This time, it's all together and it's fully recyclable. So there's so many possibilities with, with that. And I'd like to see the, the study on the five degrees Celsius. Um, change or difference, because that's a big amount. And uh, lastly, was very interesting, the ultra ply TPO Firestone roofing solutions. So I think here, what we can learn from this as ARC32 students is that these technologies, when architects specify them, for example, in the roofing of Tamasat, allows them to uh, create those gardens on the roof. So it's not like we just think of the garden on the roof. We have to think of what technologies and materials architects can specify so that it becomes a reality. And I am actually glad that that was made an example because Tamasat University with um, Tulalong Porn University in Bangkok were, were recognized because when they redeveloped their campuses, they used these technologies so that they could target sustainability. One was biodiversity, increase in biodiversity. Second was water management. So they were able to do it because of these, uh, by employing these technologies. So if you're interested in that, I would really, really ask you to, to research on how those um, two universities did it. And um, lastly, uh, we have here um, Houses of Tomorrow, which is very directly related to our um, uh, project. Um, we saw examples of innovative ways of using recyclable materials and integrating them with EcoPack to achieve reduced CO2 reduction and also hydromedia for possibly uh, water management. And we saw an example in the Philippines for Rojas Foundation Weaving Center, which uses wholesome EcoPlanet as the foundation of the structure with something that's more local. So that was very interesting. We, we can do this in ARC32 as well. I think we did uh, many studies of the, of the community itself in Maginhawa. So here, they're using cement bamboo frame technology from Base by Foundation. And um, Mam Steph and Sir Irwin, the, the College of Architecture is actually partnered with Base Bahai. Um, under urban uh, building science studio lab, environmental landscape studio lab, urban design studio lab, um, to develop socialized housing using their technology. Um, I think the lead of this is Dr. Um, Boot. So it's good because we might see ourselves there again, us again together. So with that, that's the that is the uh, gist of what I hope we learned. I'd like to open the floor to anyone here um, who might have any questions for our speakers. So kindly just raise your hand if you have a question or comment. I, okay, I'll begin it. Ma'am Steph, for the recycling of the, uh, or for the collection, because you said you collected waste, or, or you ac accepted waste that was collected by the LGU. Um, do you accept all sorts of waste or does it have to be segregated? I only ask this question because the students in, in my class, I told them that in the design of their housing, I want them to also think of such small things as how waste is going to be stored in that compound because they're designing a compound of three household uh, dwelling units. So usually, you know, it's a plastic garbage bin, that's a sidewalk. So I told them even those small little things, I want them to think about 
So how do how do you actually get to use those uh, waste? So kasi we have a quality assurance then of the waste that we receive. So it's very important that it's segregated. Oo. And as much as possible, we only co-process mga non-recyclable based on the waste hierarchy. So if, for example, there are recycled plastics, it's better to bring them to recyclers. Unfortunately, medyo limited siya sa Pilipinas. No? Kaya yung alternative talaga sometimes is bring it to, to us for co-processing. So yeah, so we it's important that the waste are segregated. Oh. Yeah, I think that's a very important thing that you said it's non-recyclable because I think in the government setup the MRFs are already collecting the recyclable ones and so what we have left for collection is that one and if we can divert that from the landfill into something that's going to be used for another product that's truly the circular economy we see, which will reduce the, the demand on the LGU as well for that. So I want the students to think about that, that the waste in the design of that small compound of yours should be segregated in that sense. Because if architects will start doing this in everything they design, then you can imagine communities that are set up this way. It will be easier for LGUs to, to operate that type of project. All right. Any more questions? Or that was my question. Are there, is there anyone who wants to ask a question? Hydromedia or Ecopath or Aerium or the roofing solution? Or, or maybe there, oh, there's a question and I'm going to call you since <laughs> Miko Aurelio, please ask your question instead. So our speakers can okay. Voice. Um, so I'd like to ask lang, um, which products are readily available in the Philippines and is the cost of these products lower than your traditional Portland cement? Because um, I think most owners um, only see um, the benefit um, regarding the cost. Like, is it lower for me? Do I have to pay more or less? Yeah, good question. So the available products because ang holes in Philippines is wala pang concrete. Uh, manufacturing plant. No, we only have cement plant. So all those cement bags kanina na nakita natin from Excel, Solido, AquaX, uh, EcoPlanet, and Holcim Wall, right? They are all readily available. Although, hindi siya nation nationwide pa, no? May mga, may mga products na available lang sa isang area, like Wall, right? Prime, for example, is only available in Lugait and La Union just because we're still setting up the plants to be capable of producing additional products as well. So but yep, and they are normally uh, lower in terms of uh, price compared to the usual uh, type one cement. Okay, thank you. Welcome, would, sir. Well, would you have, sorry, I can ask add on question. When you say lower, did you already have like a study? Is it like, do you have an exact amount or you just, you just know it's gonna be Ooh. lower? It's generally <laughs> lower. Uh, because the, the exact amount per product would be dependent on which which area you are in because of the you know distance. Yeah. But right. yeah, uh, in general, it's lower a, compared to Portland cement. Would you be able to give us a percentage? Just because so, our students are also required to consider a budget in this mm. project. So if they would say, and you know, if they say, oh, I'm for my to address my sustainability goal, etc., and the cost, we're gonna use this. So at least they can yeah. peg a percentage decrease. I would say ballpark figure na lang. Siguro mga 10 pesos. All right. Yeah. Per. But, but of per course, bag. that varies. There's a lot of variability there. No? Pero, I guess. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Don't be shy. You can ask anything related to the presentation provided. I think which, I- th which, okay. which of those products you want to see here in the Philippines? I mean, the global <laughs> products that I mentioned, I think <laughs> that's one good information that probably we can also get from the students or, or the faculty. Most probably- Are you? Yeah, from our experience, when we have projects that are large enough to import a large amount, then we do that with other 
suppliers, other brands? Question. Pwede ako yung magtanong. Sure. <laughs> yung asking nyo ba in Maginhawa, it's a new site project or there are demolitions pa needed? Or it's a new site? No, so we the or site is actually... Oh, after uh, I, we answer this question, we have uh, Dr. Del Castillo with a, a question. So the site is actually, um, it's brownfield. So there's actually development on it, but for the purposes of the project, we just considered it as empty for the students. Uh, Dr. Del Castillo. Hi. Uh, follow up lang ako do sa presentation ni Erwin kanina. Uh, medyo disappointed ako na parang, ano eh, you build me up and then you let me down. Kasi, <laughs> kasi, Kasi ang ganda-ganda na. Uy, uy, okay ah. Uy, okay na. As malalaman mo na lang. Parang wala pa pala dito. Parang, ba't naman ganun? Parang nagbibigay pa kayo ng paasa at asin pala wala pa dito. So, yeah. when, when can we expect that to be here? Yeah. It's just to, sh uh, just to show Doc na yun, this, this uh, technologies exist and there's going to be business cases to be done for each of those um, solutions pero, pero here na, in the Philippines. Pero like, like for example nga, yung air, aerium, aerium. Yung aerium, that, that will need to be tested again under our mm. climate conditions. Kasi, okay. I don't know if you know, wala masyadong nag-work na waterproofing dito sa atin. Totoo. Oh. Parang kahit anong, parang, ano eh, kahit anong gawin, parang, for some reason, na hindi naman tayo high heat, but for some reason, it doesn't last five years. Yeah. Yung, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's why we actually dis discourage students from thinking of flat roofs, even if they, they're they're swayed by mass media and uh, oh, ganda pag flat roof, it, it's so no, but it's not no longer it's not applicable to the tropics actually. And because we we don't have the, the 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 materials that actually succeed in dealing with ano, because we have so much rain, and yun nga, problema ron is that if it's a flat roof, then your for a, for some quite some time your roof mo will be carrying that amount, amount of yeah. water, so load na naman yan. and then pag pumulo pa, it's mahirap. So Ang tanong ko ay when will it be available and then ah hindi wait yung 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 una muna yung uh, blended cements yung blended cements natin are they already they're already available di ba Yes sir ah uh, yes doc um uh, they're available Ecoplanet is available in in uh NCR in Mabini area in Batangas area or South Luzon area yeah. Kaya lang, ang implementation niya would be hindi siya sa bayan lahat nationwide because you know may mga plants na may mga limitations din eh. We have four plants in the Philippines by the way. So, hindi siya pwedeng pagsabayan lahat. So, una, may mga planta na capable so they go there first and then develop okay. the market. So, so ibig sabihin, uh, the drive of Holcim to to bring down their carbon emissions by having green cement products isn't yet isn't a full, in full blast here in the Philippines? Uh, nag full blast na siya with the Excel because Excel is already a blended cement and that's 20 years ago we started. Yeah, already. yun na nga. Oh. Yeah. So meron but na? It, yeah, meron na. Itong mga bago lang, yung mga product like Ecoplanet, which has the lowest sana, yeah. is still oh. going to, for sure, nag-start lang tayo then last last year lang. Eh. So we need to... Yeah, pero ano yung una, yung 20 years ago? Ano Excel. Excel. Yung Excel, Excel is that used for, pwede na yun for residential structural yes, application. It's a general Pero, structural application. Uh, ano yung, ano niya? Uh, highest? Medyo, medyo yung calcium, uh, car carbon dioxide reduction na is nasa 22% compared uh, mo sa ecoplanet na nasa 30 na siya. Okay, so but, but it, yung, yung Excel is, is uh, ano yung highest, ano niya? Uh, uh, compressive strength niya, na, na attainable. 28 megapascal dog in 28 uh, so, days. So 3,000. Yeah, 3,000. 3,000 ba o 4? Uh, 28 is 4 yata. 4,000 PSI. Oh. Oh, 4, so pwede na. Okay na yun. Yep. For, ano, even for a four-story building. 4,060. Yep. 
Yeah. So okay na yun. I mean, but uh, yun nga the the problem is really the ano pa rin ano the the yung tao to the image na hindi sa Portland therefore yeah totoo yun yun ang kalaban lagi yun ang challenge namin palagi in promoting blended cement it's really treated as inferior compared to Portland when in fact in other countries na it's widely used in infra projects because of those ano lang eh gusto natin higher list rent agad but but it's understandable no but uh, in the long term yeah. blended cement should be more durable and long lasting yep yeah. yep yeah. Ayun lang. Thank you, Irwin. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Doc. All right. Thank you. Uh, do we have any student? Any, any, maybe just one more? Can we squeeze one more? Dr. Ano, Sir Nick, do you want to call one of your students? <laughs> Sino kaya? Prof. Ano, Renem. Meron po kayo, ano, student. Hi, hello. Hi, Ron. Wala naman. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See, see, okay. All right. Let's see. Thank you so much. See, much. see ice bear sana. Kaya lang. De, but but yun nga. Uh, ang ang importante is that at least uh, we can already see. We can input already uh, the use of blended cements in in the, in our project now. Because we can see already what we what we plan to do is we we will use edge we will use we will use edge so we will input the use of blended cement tapos tigyan namin ano yung effect ng pond so you know it's 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 something that na ma, at least makita nila na oh something uh, available in the country uh, it's already there and it promises to reduce carbon emission so if we input that here then Okay na. I mean, they can already see at least in theory na ito yung ano niya. For the building that they design, magagamit na yun. Yes, sir. It's like a, a tangible exercise for them. Yeah. And then they would yeah. em, em, so, imply it. So, so don't worry that your that your uh, percent, sorry, I'm in my mga aso. Uh, don't worry that the your presentation might not, you know, but it's, it, I would say it's a good a uh, Um, exposure for them na at least maalala nila na Colsim already has blended cements and it's uh, you have this drive to really bring down the carbon emissions so sana nga ano yun actually ang, ang, kung seryoso talaga ang gobyerno pwede nang iban yung Portland cement eh. Kaya lahat tayo blended cement na tapos na Ito. yun lang naman yun eh. totoo dok Actually, yeah. Doc, we really need policy support because even the DPWH projects, even government projects, they're limited din ang paggamit ng blended cement. Yeah, hindi. So exactly yeah. Working. Eh, the... Kasi nandun na yung mga human factors. Mm, human factors. That's a nice <laughs> term. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> human factor. Hindi, yeah, actually, yeah. ano yun eh, on, on the other hand, ano yun eh, para bang if you, psychologically kasi, if you're using a ano yun? yung inferior and I'm putting quotes inferior cement and the tendency ng designer medyo ikukuan niya yeah but, uh, but at least we were able to yung, yung kanyang mix para kunwari mas mataas para magkamali man eh, ano. kasi yun, yun naman ang nature ng, ng concrete eh. it's, it, because it's mixed ang daming factors of ano, error din dyan sa pag-mix ng concrete. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yep. But anyway, uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, nice sir Richard pala has a question. Ah, answered na daw. Ano po yung question nyo, uh, sir Richard? Na- Ayan, itatanong ko lang sana ano yung, uh, kasi kanina, um, Irwin seems to be very interested in asking a question Uh, in answering, I uh, know, in asking questions uh, from the, uh, in answering questions from the students, pala, so that he can he will be able to somehow study. Uh, kung ano yung uh, gusto ng mga students or whoever, no? Yeah. Um, 
so it means that you are still studying the possibility of bringing in the technology here in the Philippines. That's why it's not here yet, or it's uh, probably because of bureaucracy. No, it, it will really uh, be a case study because still a bit first and foremost, baka mahal siya masyado, is the market ready for these type of solutions. So we can start with big companies and then bring it here. So, kasi sayang din na dalhin siya dito and then baka hindi rin siya mag-work because we're still, nandun pa rin tayo dun sa traditional way of doing things. No? So, we still need to look into that and the business side of it as well. No? Na, na pilot yeah. nyo ba yung permeable concrete? Per, yes. Uh, dito, yung permeable concrete hanggang pilot lang kami. <laughs> hanggang And sa laboratory ano lang. And we're able to produce uh, permeable concrete blocks. <laughs> But what, how does it perform? Yeah, it, it, it passes the, yung sinabi ko kaninang drainage time, yung parang pass-through rate niya. It, nakuha naman namin. It's just that uh, kailangan namin una uh, batching plant. Kailangan namin ng ready mix na sarili. Meron sana kami dati but then we give it up because hindi siya nag-work yung business na yun. So, um, but probably Ayan. Oh, oh, Ayan, uh, gagawin yung driveway yeah. ng RQ. Pwede. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, pwede nilang sponsor yun. Gagawin yung driveway ng RQ. We actually, pilot, pilot uh, actually sir, uh, when we did this project, uh, a green filter that mm -hmm. Halsen also helped us with. So Halsen provided the cement. But we asked uh, Sika, I think, was the provider of the membrane. Um, they had they didn't have the, the product in the Philippines. It was only in Singapore, the nearest. So because it was a, if they tested that green filter, the fighter remediation plant, they, that's part of what they did. They brought, they brought it here for us. They imported it for us. So yeah, we can request Halsev. You know, oh, like wait, a, Erwin, so it's not feasible ang permeable concrete dito pa. Alam, alam ko doc may gumamit ng ano permeable concrete pero somewhere sa BGC eh parang ginawa nilang parang pang ano lang hit hit island effect. Hindi oh, ko lang alam mm. yung building na yun na nasa tapat ng Adidas nung BGC yung sa may security exchange as a PSE ba yun parang ganun. But uh think ko feasible may mga gustong gumamit. Yung mass production lang siguro talaga ang wala pa. Ah so hindi pa Oh, wala pa kasi Technical. concrete siya na ready mix na ibubuhos mo siya, hindi siya blocks talaga eh. Oh, that, yeah. mo talaga siya. Oh. And okay. isa pa doon, hindi siya enough na parang parang pavement na ordinary pavement or flooring siya. Ilalim noon, you have the integrated design for the drainage talaga. So, kaya nga sabi it's a water management system rather than just a pavement uh, solution. Ah, yun, yun. Yeah. So, so kailangan yung drawback. Yun yung yeah. drawback mo. And, I think in Clark, uh, there's designs, but it's a British company po yung nakakuha ng contract where they integrated that, uh, what they call blue, gray, uh, uh, blue, green, and gray. So that was the gray uh -huh. part of that infrastructure where they also have another technology to accept the water underneath yeah. that. So kung uh, roof siya tapos water collection or rain harvesting system, yung mga ganun kailangan siya naka-integrate siya sa isang full water management uh, system na uh, design. Okay. All right. Okay, so... Yeah, uh, excuse me, also. So, for the sake of the students um, who are here, medyo parang kukonti sila, no? But uh, for the sake of the students who are here, Two uh, we, are, we are allowing them to use technology or products that are not available in the Philippines but are available, basically, right? So, pwede Very nila well. sa... Sana, sana available. Ah, sana available. Oo, oh, yun yung Excel. So, okay, yun. Blended Excel, yun. that's fine. Kasi if it's not available, then you're increasing your carbon footprint for importation. Ah, so, yeah, for uh, importing, no? Yeah. So, okay na. At least yung Excel is already here. Gamitin lang yun. It's a uh, ano, good, good exercise na rin siya. Okay. And a lot of the principles naman can be applied. Yeah. Mm. And, and yeah. I just like to add, one of the most important things we're doing here, I guess, is exactly that. We're, the students now know that these exist. Yeah. Oh. One of the biggest 
things that products need are market demand. And these will be the, the yep, yep, yep. Our licensed architects in the next five-ish years. Mm-hmm. And in 10 years, they'll be around already the profession. So hopefully they remember uh, yeah. these types of approaches so that the market demand will be there. And yep. then, may ingit tayo kasi nung time natin wala, pero nung time nila, may market demand na. So nandyan na siya. Mm-hmm. Right. Siguro sa location ng project, i-consider kung saan yung location ng project. And then, the hierarchy would be eco-label products. Kung nandun siya sa area niya, it's available, then you can use it. Uh, Ecoplanet, for example, or World Right Prime, for example. And then, if the eco-label products is not available, then go to the next, which is the general use uh, blended cement deck Excel. So, for now, that's what we can do. Yep. All right. Okay, so thank you so much again. Thank you. And uh, before we end, so uh, we hope that this presentation by Ma'am Stephanie and Sir Irwin has helped you understand how the selection of materials in this particular case, concrete in your design can affect your sustainability goals. And that this consensus approach follows with every aspect and decision you will need to make in the development of your designs. In this case, the specification of materials that support your architectural ideas. Before we end, we'd like to present uh, the certificate of the key. Yes, um, to our esteemed resource speakers, Stephanie Ann Fragoso and Erwin Mendoza from Holson, Philippines. We thank you for sharing your expertise and knowledge in sustainable products and innovative building solutions to our students. Uh, and we began this relationship uh, last year with our parametric design and digital fabrication lecture series and with today's lecture on sustainable products and building solutions. And we hope to continue to grow this partnership. Salamat, let's, Irwin. Salamat, Stephen. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for inviting us. All right. Okay, so that ends our... Um, special uh, lecture for today. And for those who need to review this again, we will just post the recorded um, session to your uh, Google Classrooms. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Oh, Thank you, sir. Um, the we feedback form. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. the feedback form. We'll, we'll post it as feedback. well to your Google Classrooms. Thank you. Thank you.